The right of association allows for workers to group together to ensure that they are treated fairly by employees and governments. But trade unions of today have taken on much broader roles for their members. In Indonesia, an independent trade union is making sure that the country's workers stay on the road to development despite having to cope with economic crisis. As the Asian economic crisis hit Indonesia in 1997, Jenab lost her job when the electronic factory she was working in closed down. Her husband was also out of work, and with children to feed, she did not know what to do. Coming to her rescue was not the government nor any charity organization, but a unique scheme run by an Indonesian trade union. Thanks to a loan from the union, I have been able to run this business for over a year now. My pay is not too bad and we manage even though my husband is still unemployed. My savings are for my children back in the village. In a country where for decades independent trade union activity was brutally suppressed by the authorities, the Indonesian Prosperous Workers Union, or SBSI, is a surprisingly strong and mature organization. Born in 1992, in response to the growing problems of ordinary workers who are discontent with the official union, the SBSI has more than 155,000 members in over 60 branches throughout Indonesia. The role of the trade union is uh, very important for the future. Without the union, if union mandate not living yet in Indonesia, Indonesia will never reach the real prosperity. Mukta himself is living testimony to the trials and tribulations that union activists underwent during the dictatorial Suharto regime of three decades. Arrested in 1996, while leading an agitation by workers, Mukta was thrown into prison and sentenced to death for alleged treason. It took an international campaign by trade unions and human rights activists around the globe to get him released in 1998. The situation at present of the trade unions is very much bound up with the democratization in the region. Uh, there's a growing realization that democracy does not consist only of elections and parliaments, uh, but of a much broader participation of organized civil society in decision making and policy making in the country. Because of the highly organized character of the trade unions, uh, a certain discipline, if I may put it that way, uh, there are elements in the societies that are fearful uh, that indeed the trade union movement will represent a threat. In 1998, after the toppling of the authoritarian Suharto government, Indonesia ratified the ILO Convention on Freedom of Association and Protection of the Right to Organize. The country's new democratic government also introduced other legislation, making it easier to set up trade unions. Despite such positive measures, trade union leaders complain that they face many obstacles in their struggle to get workers a better deal. When the labor go to the police department or, or go to the uh, government to ask, uh, to, uh, to ask about their rights, they could not get any help. The biggest challenge facing Indonesia's workers, however, is unemployment. Since 1997, millions have lost their jobs due to the economic crisis. It is in this context that SBSI's People's Economic Empowerment Project to help unemployed workers find a livelihood is an excellent example of the crucial role trade unions can play in any democracy. Under this scheme, the union provides loans to cooperatives of unemployed workers. These initiatives are also being supported by progressive entrepreneurs 
who see the benefits of investing in ventures where the workers have a stake in the success of the business. Before the reform, we are looking the, uh, the labor only as a part of the, our work, something like that. But after the reform, we are looking them different meaning. Means we are looking them as part of our partner. For the SBSI itself, such participation of workers in business is just another step towards making the Indonesian democracy one in which every citizen has a stake. All individuals are not able to enjoy civil and political rights and freedoms, then countries and communities have little hope of being able to realize their full potential for development.